guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super cute bib. So this is just a regular cotton bib with adorable little ties here and then this really fun pom-pom trim. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make or how to install this pom-pom trim. So even if you don't want to make um, a bib, you can learn how to put something like this in um, and it goes the same with um, piping as well. So you can learn how to do that and of course if you're interested in the pattern that will be over at the blog post. So let's just get straight into the tutorial. Okay so for this tutorial you're going to need to print out the pattern. You can find that over at charmedbyashley.com. That link will be in the description box or the comment section or the cards of this video. This is the small smallest size. There will be three sizes available, but the small size will be for free. So if you're interested in all three sizes, you can get that over at the Etsy shop. Um, but if you're not already supporting me over on Patreon, um, all my patterns are for free if you show some support over there. So if you're already, you know, supporting me over there, then that will be posted um, as soon as this video goes up so you can go over and get all three sizes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out our pattern piece. And this is half of the pattern piece and as you can see there's these little arrows here and that means that this line is going to be on the fold of your fabric. I'm just going to show you quickly what that means. So this is the fabric that I use. I'm just using cotton today but you can use many different fabrics for bibs. Whatever you think is the most beautiful and the softest can go with Mickey or flannel or terry cloth or you can do um, cotton linen there's organic cottons there's just so many different fabrics to choose from that are absolutely beautiful so for this one as you can see this is a directional fabric so I folded my fabric in half making sure that the pattern would fit on it and then I just basically line up that edge with the fold and then I would put down some pattern weights and then just cut around this and then that would give us our pattern piece which is going to look like this. So I went ahead and cut out another piece for the back. This is a white cotton linen. So we have two pieces of cotton and then we need to figure out what we're going to use for our ties. Now I do have a few bib tutorials on my channel already um, that do have snap closures, but this one's going to be a tie closure, which I haven't made yet. Um, so I'm actually going to be using some double folded bias tape, but you can use soft cord or anything that would be nice against baby's skin. So this is just double fold bias tape, and I like that it's about a half inch, and this will be perfect as a tie. This is what they kind of use in most bibs. Definitely back in the old days they used this. It's a very common. Um, and for some little added cuteness, <laughs> I'm going to be using this adorable little pom-pom trim. So I'm going to show you how to put on a pom-pom trim. Okay, so I'm just going to cut my bias tape or cord, whatever you happen to be using. I'm going to cut two pieces at 10 inches. And if you can hear my kids, it is PD Day weekend. There's a four-day weekend, so they're home. <laughs> so we have those two pieces. I'm going to be using pins for this project. Um, I find that the clips just won't do it when I'm working with this pom-pom trim. Okay, so hopefully you can see this because I am using white on a white background which I do not recommend. Okay, so with this bias tape, um, it is folded once and then folded in on itself, so the raw edges are all hidden. I went ahead and did a seam along the open edge just to close it off, so I already did that. I'm just gonna insert a little clip here. I'm engaged. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. 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 And then that is how I made my little ties. So we're gonna go ahead and put the ties into our bib. So I'm going to place one here 
and one there and then I will just put a little pin in that okay so I'm going to take my white piece and I'm going to put that on top but I'm going to take my ties and I'm going to kind of just like kind of fold it in hopefully it stays like that we don't want it to obviously get in the get caught in the seams we're gonna put our backing piece on top and we're gonna sew all the way around this but we're gonna leave a gap and we're gonna leave that gap right here so we're basically going to concentrate on this area and this is where I'm gonna put my pom-pom trim I'm gonna start it here go all the way around and I'm gonna end it there so basically right where the tie starts that's where I want my pom-pom trim to end so this is what pom-pom trim looks like you can get it in um, different sizes so this is kind of the baby version and I'll have links to this um, in the um, in the description if you're interested in looking for some of this pom-pom trim super cute um, if you don't want to use pom-pom trim you can do other things super cute lacy trim um, you can just use regular lace. I even got this at the dollar store. This is super cute. And you can also use piping. And this is what the piping would look like. This is just a cotton piping. And you can actually buy it with the bias tape. So if you're looking at the sewing store, um, this will be with this. So this is installed the same way as the pom-pom trim, so whichever one you're doing, um, then you'll already know how to, to install it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up the edge there. Um, so what you need to do with the pom-pom trim is we're going to install it. There's this flat part right here, and that's where you're going to sew it on. So I'm going to open it up and we're going to line up that edge with the edge of the fabric. So it's gonna be like that. And we want the pom-poms to be on the inside. So this is a little bit fiddly, but We're just going to slowly and we're kind of going to work all the way around. If you want to do this at the exact same time, um, sandwich that at the same time you can do that um, it takes a little bit and like I said it's a little bit fiddly so you want to make sure that everything is nice and even and I'm gonna have the pom-pom trim kind of veer off right at the top there so you want to just be really careful And although it looks like it's hard to do, it is so worth it in the end. And it looks so stinking cute. It's just, I love it. So I'm just going to keep going and working my way around the bib. And I'll go ahead and speed it up a little. Okay, so I used every single pin in my house, <laughs> but I have it all nice. I'm just going to cut off the excess palm trim. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew all the way around. Like I said, I'm going to leave the hole like either here or here. It really, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's flatter here, so it might be easier there. We're going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance 
as best as we can with the trim. Um, maybe making it a little bit bigger here just so that when we turn in those raw edges we don't have a hard time. Um, and then yeah, you'll see how I sew this. Um, which is always interesting, but it's all practice, right? So it might be weird in the beginning, but just you gotta keep plugging away and keep trying and you'll get better and better. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Baby Lock Presto 2 for this. I'm going to be using a zipper foot. And the reason why I'm using a zipper foot is it's gonna allow me to get nice and close to the um, to the pom-pom trim. Um, if not, then I'll have um, because I can't get my needle all the way over, then um, it's not going to give me a nice close seam. So I'm just going to pop this in. I don't love sewing with my zipper foot when I'm not sewing against a zipper. <laughs> um, so kind of sucks doing it this way when it's this part but um, just try to do it as best as you can I find that I just it's, I'm, no, I'm just not as straight as I would like to be so I'm just gonna start sewing so if you can see there you can see that my needle is pretty close to the edge of the foot so I can get up nice and close to the pom-pom trim and make sure you don't accidentally sew over top of your little ties, which are on the inside. So if you're confident, you can sew right over your pins. I have never been confident. So I'm gonna pull them as I go. And making sure that your pom-pom trim is, is sticking out, um, just so that you can finish off that edge. So we're going to be sewing over the pom-pom trim and then once we get past that then we can start to position our needle so it's nice and close to the trim. And you're just going to want to try to feel it. Just make sure that the pom-poms are just left of your presser foot. Uh, this pom-pom doesn't have a lot of room, so the seam allowance is kind of small here. So I just need to be careful and slow. Making sure that we have all of our layers of fabric caught. Okay, I'm trying not to block it with my hand. I keep stabbing myself. <laughs> so if I was confident, I could just keep going. I'm just not confident. I've had too many needles smash off into my face and it might be because my mom had an old Kenmore and that is, you know, those machines would just hammer right through anything. It didn't matter what it was. Kind of like my industrial, like if you, there's something in there, it will, it's going through. Luckily these new machines, they have sensors. So once they feel any resistance, they will just, they'll stop sewing, which is amazing. Okay. You can see that my pom-pom trim is kind of coming out. I push it in, there we go. getting a little bit of puckering here. I'm 
which is not good. Just means my bib is off a little bit. <laughs> ah, it's gonna look bad. This is just user or sewing error. see what's going on here and there are some spots that I dropped off which is okay Oops. I'm just gonna go and start on the other side. Okay, so it's totally okay. I'm gonna have to cut off some of the bib pattern. Maybe it's stretched, I don't know. Sometimes that will happen. Um, but it might be just because of here. I'm just gonna fix that again. Normally I would just cut this part out, but I just want you to know that... Oh, I already did that. I'm not perfect. So. That looks pretty good though. I mean, I'm happy with it. Either way, um, even if you have to cut off a little bit, it's okay because um, we're using ties, so there's still some wiggle room and you're not gonna lose much of the circumference of the bib. Okay, I'm just gonna cut that excess off. Just pretend that never happened, see? You can't even tell. <laughs> Okay, so now making sure that all your pins are out, we're just going to flip it right sides out with the little hole. And we're gonna see if our pom-pom trim looks good. I like to use a knitting needle and I like to put it through the hole and then kind of massage the themes. Uh oh, I got a little hole there. That's okay, I'll fix that after. Oh my goodness, how cute is that? <gasps> I love it. Okay, I'm just gonna get my... Um, okay, so now we're just gonna give it a good press. I didn't even heat up my iron, but I did go ahead and fix that. Um, if you want to start turning in those little raw edges so you can prepare that. You can do a little top stitch along there to close it up. If you want to do a top stitch around the whole entire thing, you can do that. I kind of like it when there's no top stitch along the edges. I'll show you one that I've already top stitched. But this is also an opportunity to use decorative stitches. If you wanted to do that, uh, use decorative thread. Um, there's just a lot of fun things that you can do at this point. And of course, this is just a plain little bib but you could totally make them more fun by adding, you know, 
cricket stuff on it you know you can make them all solid and do that kind of stuff or um, embroidery there's just so many fun things you can do with these bibs so I'm going to go ahead and do a little top stitch I'm just going to show you how cute I can't do a bow. Oh my goodness, how darling. And I, I even centered um, the little fox, and I think it's a little skunk, right in the center, so that it's perfectly adorable. <laughs> So if you wanted to um, use a matching thread so you didn't see it as much, um, I'm using white so not too worried. But this will also be underneath the chin so you, uh, you won't see it. I'm going to start over here actually and maybe I'll start, yeah I'll start here and then this will reinforce these ties. And I'm going to turn up my machine to a three stitch length. But as you can see on this machine, if you have, you know, one of those brothers that have a trillion different stitches, there's just so many options and you can really have fun. I could do like little hearts around it or little honeybees or alligators. <laughs> so many different little fun designs that you could totally um, add to the outer edge of your bib. But... I'm just going to go with a classic regular top stitch. So that is going to secure my tie more. And I'm just doing like an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you want to continue, you're totally welcome to do that. That is how it is looking. Okay, so now we're done. How adorable is this? Oh, I absolutely love it. I don't even have a baby girl to put this on. Ugh. But I'm going to show you the other one that I made. This is with the piping. So, like I said, it's this one here and I got I just got these adorable little fat quarters over at Walmart I'm pretty sure I don't know <laughs> it's either Walmart or Michaels um, but absolutely love and like you can even reversible depending on you know what they're wearing that day but I absolutely love the piping look as well this is just, it just reminds me of the bibs that I used to wear when I was a baby. I mean, obviously I don't remember them, but I definitely know what they look like. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I hope you give it a try. And if you do, um, don't forget to share over at the social media. We have Instagram and Facebook. All those links are in the description box. Of course, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that so that you can stay in the loop with all of my future tutorials. And if you're not already supporting me over on Patreon, um, over there you do get my free patterns. So head over there, links in the description. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye guys!